but must be back to Kiran Seth to share with us your experiences and knowledge. First Director, <coughs> Professor K.M. Singh, I'd like to thank all the faculty members, the registrar, all of you having invited me to come here. The second time I've come to this Four years. Uh, my main, my main purpose of coming here is to elicit your support for this movement called Speak Mackey, which we started 46 years back at IIT Delhi, where I've been teaching uh, for 47 years. I just uh, finished my tenure as Professor Emeritus there. <clears throat> what is this pick my care and what, how would it be beneficial to you as students? As students, uh, for doing well in anything, the most important thing is concentration. How good a professor you might have, you might have lovely professors. If they are teaching but your mind is wandering, you will never get anything. What has happened today, <coughs> because of various reasons, you know, the handset, mobile, TV, everything works on making your concentration and breaking your concentration, not making your concentration. So you have tick tock tock tick tick tock. Everything is done instantaneously. In the process, what happens is the mind is a very dangerous thing. It tends to wander, and uh, while wandering, it wanders usually into the realm of things that are not good for you. So unless you have control over this lovely mind this monkey mind, it is going to control you. And all what we are doing, we are not in speak trying to give you a run bhari shab. But what we are trying to do is give you time-tested techniques which have been passed down for centuries by our ancestors, by, trial, by experimentation, experimentation, experimentation which will help you greatly as students. I'll give you a small example of how it can be beneficial to you. But before I give that example, I'll be failing in my duties if I don't introduce to you a lovely person here who has come with me, who has been looking after my stay right through this two days that I've been here, Dr. Imokja. Can you stand up, Imokja? He joined us when he was a student like you at Chandigarh in Punjab University, where he was doing his PhD. And he is one of those rare people in Speak Mackey who is a Lambi Reska Ghoda. We are not looking for short distance runners, we are looking for long distance runners because whatever we are doing has got a long gestation period. I also thank the director, I know how busy he is, for sparing some time to come here. Uh, with this, I'll proceed ahead. How is it beneficial to you in the year 2024? I'll give you a small example as I was just going to tell you. I gone to <coughs> IIT Kanpur. We are talking of concentration, therefore, you know, <laughs> I want you to sit down if you don't mind. It's just for another 20 minutes because I have to catch up. Unfortunately, I don't. Nowadays, students don't smile. You should smile more. So when I saw him smiling, I said, come here. So I asked him, how are you doing? He said, sir, I'm a topper. So I said, which coaching institute did you join? 
So I didn't join any coaching institute. I didn't have any money. Which attempt is it of yours? My first attempt, sir. So I said, how did you do this? He did like this. My school. So I said, which school was this? So he talked to some tiny school, village school. So I said, what was so special about your school? <coughs> he said, the motto of our school was Hare Bachche Ki Ekatrata Madhane. And I'm adding to that, that is, make every child's concentration increase. Increase every child's concentration. I'm adding to that, or Uski Dhyarita Madhane and increase his patience level. I said, okay, then how did they do it? He said, sir, every morning, what used to happen was, the whole school had to do half an hour of yoga. So I said, that many schools do, what's so great about it? He said, no, sir, it's not like how the other schools do it, in which a PT instructor is sent for a six-month crash course in yoga. He comes back and teaches you to either PT or yoga. He says, it's also not like what you see on TV. Ek pao ke what you sa pao rakho ge, dai ki tar mudo ge, to kaan ka dar chala jai. Bai ki tar mudo ge, to naan ka dar chala jai. No. He says, concentrating on my monkey mind. My monkey mind which was jumping. From Dhoom 1, Dhoom 2, Dhoom 240, to Shahrukh Khan, to Amitabh Bachchan, he brought it with him, three sigma. So then what happened? He said then after school, the whole school, all the children, had to learn to one hour of Indian classical music. My concentration which was this much came like this, like this, became like a laser beam. So when I took my physics, maths, whatever book to study, what others would take many hours to do, I'd finish it like this. All this has been made possible, as I told you, with these two pivots. Why can't we use these techniques? You know, in Manipur itself, what a rich tradition, what a rich tradition. I have seen with my own eyes, and I have been affected by it, not as a Manipuri, but I've seen Guru Thanil Singh doing Poon Cholam 30 years ago. And I can never forget that drishya of him doing Poon Cholam. It was not a dance. He was complete meditation. He was like this, like this. And he was doing his thing. You want to come, come. If you don't want to come, travel, bye bye. He was on his trip. My dear students, if we incorporate, I'm not saying you have to all become. Manipuri artists or classical musicians or no. But we can take the benefits of these great gurus. What they have given to us all through so many centuries of experimentation. We can use them in our lives. I attribute the present condition in Manipur because of this lack of connect with our own tradition. Greatly due to that. Because if I'm connected with this inward, I won't be violent. I can't be violent. I cannot pick up a gun and start shooting people. <coughs> if I'm connected with them, I'll be much more balanced. Today that imbalance has come. Money power, opium power, poppy power, this power, that power has made the balance collapse. We think that everything outward will help us. If we get lots of money, finally, bottom line, it's all about money. You can check it out. You know what? When I find that my monthly sources are getting squeezed, then I'll pick up my gun and do whatever I have to do. So my dear students, please be careful. If you develop while you're doing the best of studies here in NIT Manipur with lovely professors, that is one part of Vidya. The second part of Vidya is the inward part. There has to be a balance between Paravidya and Aparavidya. 
If there is no balance, what happens is the imbalance creates stress, creates depression, and gives rise to things like what's happening here, things like what's happening to you, anxiety, depression, all these things are a result of that. So each of you has to do something like it's like a believe you me, it's like a pandemic. Across the world, not just in India, it's a pandemic. Depression, anxiety has become a pandemic. How? Look what happened in COVID. In COVID, first people would get sick. Many people. Then out of that, many people would get very severely sick. And out of that, many people would die. Look at this as well. You have to think about these things. If you just keep looking at the books, and that too without any concentration, and only look at Instagram, only look at Twitter, you know, you can get many things from Google search, but you cannot get that wisdom for sure. That will have to come from these things. And I'll, I'll give you another example <coughs> of, <coughs> you know, I was talking of the depression, what happens? Depression, severe depression, and then jumping off, committing suicide. In the last one month, there have been three suicides in IIT in Kanpur. Again, what Professor Jaydeva, Jaydeva was telling me, he said that, this is, he himself, he told me this yesterday, and he was saying how it has become like a big, big problem in our institution. So if we can bring in these things into your lives, it will be very, very beneficial. How can you do it? I want to give you some practical tips. I just mentioned that you people are capable of doing... Can someone put off your... You know, we all are using, if I might say so, only this percentage of your mind. If you see, I'll tell you, what if you see a monkey on the tree and you tell the monkey to dance, will it dance? No. But the monkey man catches the monkey and brings it here and says, dance, and dances. How does it? He trains the monkey. He says, the monkey, if you dance, I'll give you a banana. If you don't dance, I'll give you a stick. And the monkey starts dancing. Today, your monkey mind is making you dance. If you can turn the tables and learn how to make your monkey mind dance, you will be able to unleash a potential which is far, far, far greater than what you think you have. Really, I'm telling you. Just look at it. One Einstein, look at the power of the mind. One Einstein, sitting in a small room in Geneva Patent Office, more than 100 years ago, with pen, paper and mathematics was able to postulate so many great, great, great things which we are using today. He, I'll give one example, he postulated the existence of gravitational waves. In 100 years after he postulated this, in 2017, three physicists got the Nobel Prize for Physics. For what? For proving that what Einstein said 100 years back was correct. This is the power of the human mind. If you can unleash it, and you can only unleash it by having full control over it, and you can only have full control over it if you practice it every day. For example, like how has Virat Kohli or Maxwell become so good at cricket? They must have practiced like crazy. Every day they must have practiced. And also with that practice, they must have had a very good coach, very good coaches. That coach has learned from his coach, has learned from his coach, has learned from his coach. Each coach has bettered the art 
of playing cricket. And the cumulative wisdom of so many coaches has come down into how Virat Kohli hits the ball or how Maxwell hits the ball. So, well in life, as we agree, you must have concentration. To have concentration, you must practice concentration. And you must have a coach. Who is the best coach? Our ancestors. Because what a student 3,000, 5,000 years back felt and what you feel is not that much different. He or she also wanted to do well, we also want to do well. So what they did was they devised very scientifically. They tried, 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 passed it off to children. Tried, 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 passed it off to children. Passed it off. What we call heritage is actually just experimentation, nothing else. And we have got this by experimentation, this khazana, which we can use. You know, when I went, to, when I was a student like you, I was taken to a room as big as this. What was there? A computer. Then came Shockley, and Shockley reduced the size of the computer like that. Developing transistors. Then came ICUs, FADAX is a reduced it to that smaller size. Now we are working at the atomic level. This small a size of a computer today has got the power of what I saw when I was a student. Would it not be foolishness for us to say, go back to diodes and triodes. This is what we are doing. Truthfully, we are throwing aside Many, many thousands of years of our experimentation just like this. I can give you examples of this. And I'll tell you why also. See, traditionally, how would, I'll take an engineering example. I'm feeling hot. How would traditionally a Westerner look at the problem? And how we look at the problem. Traditionally, Westerner will say, I am feeling hot. If I twirl the air around, I should feel cool. I don't have the fan. I am still feeling hot. Expansion of gas has an effect. I develop the AC. Traditionally, how would we look at the problem? We will say that I am feeling hot because the surrounding air is hot. It touches my skin, it sends an impulse to my brain, the response and impulse makes me feel hot. What if I can break this impulse response chain? I should feel cool. What do I sit in Padmasana and I try out different experiments using my body as a laboratory. And the main beautiful thing in our heritage has been, it has been this thing, look I don't have time to Understand this infinite black box. I don't have time for that. I just got this life. I want to find out what is the input required for the best output. So what do I put a black box? I try out different inputs and see what the outputs are. And the output which is most optimal, I choose that input. What the West would do, they would do it incrementally, looking into the black box. The research goes, both are important. Please don't think that I'm trying to deride the best. So the best, I have been very, very fortunate to study at, to my PhD at Columbia University and then work at Bell Labs, which has produced nine Nobel laureates. So I've seen science and technology at its boundaries. It's wonderful. Imagine you just take a cell phone, take what, anything, small little iPad. Hey Siri, move the... Uh, rover on Mars, one foot to the left, and the rover will move one foot to the left. The great things never derive the West. But how would we look at it? We'd say, I break this impulse response chain, I'll feel cool. But we did we discount this because when you mix two chemicals in the lab, you can see the color changing. Our ancestors would mix. What we do is, when you are studying, remember two things. Very important thing. One is, try not to bend. 
efficiency of studying goes up considerably if your backbone is straight. Number one. Number two. Whenever you are studying, be still. Don't move. You know what you do? You sit like this. Then you sit like this. Then you might do like this. And then you may even do like this. <laughs> so every time you move, what happens is concentration drops. The concentration, character of concentration is it goes up, goes up, goes up. As soon as you move, drops it drops. So what you have to learn is to be absolutely still, as still as possible when you are studying. So now, we'll do this small exercise. You have to sit up. It is, it put like this, it's Yan Mudra. If it's like this, it's Chin Mudra. And these three, this is an antenna. It's an antenna asking for wisdom. So put it like this on your thighs or on the, on the table, no problem, put on your thighs or on the table. The three fingers should be straight because the antenna is crooked, you won't get the waves, okay? If it's straight, thumb and first finger touching lightly and close your eyes, eyes are very dangerous. So close your eyes, now listen to it. <coughs> Take a deep breath, hold, let the air out slowly and keep the air out. Concentrate on the sensation which you get at your nostrils when you are breathing in and breathing out. Change. Take your concentration now from your nostrils down the windpipe down to the nabi and exhaling from the nabi up through the windpipe and out through the nostrils. Long inhalation, long retention, long exhalation and long shunya, keeping the air out. Change. Place your ish in the middle of your forehead and full concentration on the feet of your ish. Long inhalation, long retention, long exhalation, and long shunya. Open your eyes slowly, rub your palms and place them on the eyes. Very simple technique. You do it every day and see what the result is. I'm going to end here but with two requests. The first request is that nobody should clap. This is my prayer which I've come to share with you. So no clapping. Number one. Number two, can you just put that uh, uh, QR code on, please? We have formed uh, all those who would like to join this voluntary movement just to even to come get information, including faculty members. It will be lovely if you just take a photograph of that and you will automatically join this NIT. I am also part of it, Ego is also part of it. 
and we'll be sending you information about what's happening right from the topmost institutions in the world to government schools. The next thing that I'd like to show is the phone number. Have you put that phone number of Siva Kumar? No. That Siva Kumar's phone number, I want just type it out, please. We have formed a group. You see, today, uh, you know what's happening in Imphal and in Manipur. And we felt that a lot of work, relief work is going on. But it's going on in the outward domain, in the sense that we are giving food, we are giving blankets, we are giving things like that, which they have lost. Very, very important. But what about the inner beauty, inner things that are broken? So what we decided was that we are going to do six workshops of five days each in 15 relief camps in Imphal. And these six workshops will be on, one will be on Manipuri Sankirtan, one will be on Pung Cholam, third one will be on Lai Haroba, fourth on Tamta, fifth on classical music, and the sixth one on handloads, Manipuri handloads. <coughs> For five days, just people will do that. Because our arts are not arts. They, the art part is only a little bit, but it does a lovely healing process inside. We have tried this out in Kashmir, during the height of terrorism. We have tried this out in Punjab, during the height of the Khalsa movement, when Punjab was burning. And now, we are going to be doing it here also. So, you know, this is a voluntary movement. Who will run it? You people. If you can give a little bit of your time, Delta, Delta tending to zero, it will be wonderful. We are not asking for lots of time. Ebo cannot do it himself. We get the artist, but how who will look at the see the minute details of whether it's going on right or wrong? So that part we request your support. So we have made a group called Speak Make Relief Work in Manipur. Uh, and I have requested one professor Siva Kumar of the